Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel House Planty Goodness and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion which you might be able to see around me, it's tropical houseplants. Now today's video is going to be a bit different, we're kind of coming up to the festive season, at least we are when I'm filming this video and I know a lot of people might be looking at potentially getting some plants for friends and families as a gift. And there's a lot to be said about getting the right type of plant for the right individual and the care level that they can give them and there's obviously a lot more rare plants that are coming onto the market a bit more readily. They're a bit more expensive so people might say oh I'll get this lovely expensive plant for this person because it will show that I love them a bit more. Be careful with that sometimes because there's a reason why some of those plants are a bit rarer even though they're becoming easier to find now at higher prices in some stores they tend to be fussier and potentially more difficult to grow. That's why there's a big community like myself and uh, other people that are really into their houseplants that they've kind of been growing houseplants and tropical plants for a long period of time and they know how to care for them. But these plants that I want to talk about now are a lot more easily available. They've not got a high price for them because they've been around for a while and they're generally easy to care for for most people, even people that don't have quote unquote a green thumb and I don't truly believe that there is such a thing as a green thumb. It's more about the willingness of the person to learn and people might say that I've got a green thumb because look at all of the plants that I've got around me. These are the plants that survived. I'm not gonna lie, most of us out there, even people with massive collections, we've killed our fair share of plants along the way of learning what we need to do to care for certain types of plants. But the ones I want to talk about today, and I've done other videos more individually for each one of these plants, so do check it out on my channel and you can see the care guide of each one of these separately. But these plants are plants that will just keep on keeping on and they've been around in the market for a very long period of time and there's a reason for that. They're relatively affordable and they're easy to care for. But enough of me plathering on basically let's talk about the plants individually. You might be able to see one of them in front of me now and I will try pulling it up without pulling everything down from the table. So the first one I want to talk about is the ponytail palm. Definitely a bit of a showstopper because you get that main cordex there. This is one that you want to treat a bit like a succulent so make sure you don't overwater it because it does store water here and give it plenty of light this is definitely one for the forgetful waterer. I've done another video specifically talking about how I've given this plant to a friend of mine who could pretty much kill a rock and she's managing to keep it alive and it's two years later and it's still going strong. So that gives you an idea of how well this plant does. But this is a very very cool one. It does definitely have that kind of palm like feel and you can see me through all these foliage. Um, but it's not technically a palm, it's a succulent, so it's a lot more forgiving. Bright light, be careful with the watering, and this will be fine. You can pretty much sit it anywhere as long as there's some bright light. Let me put this down and pick up the next plant. The next plant I want to talk about is the humble pothos, or the Epipremnum aureum, or the devil's ivy. Many, many common names, and again, you'll notice if the plant has got many different common names, it's because it's been around for a while which means that it's relatively bomb proof because people have been growing it for a while and it's one that we've kind of used to seeing around the place. So Apothos might not be that exciting for most people but there are some more interesting varieties that are now out of the market other than just the green one or the green and yellow variegated one that everybody's used to seeing in movies, in offices, in your grandmother's house. This is one of them. This is an example. So this is the Marble Queen, so it's got a lot of creamy white variegation on it and then some green splattering around and each leaf is quite unique. So this is a very cool one to grow. This one just again, it needs to just be drenched with water when it's fully dry. Give it some decent light, so bright indirect light. And if you want to help your friend out if you're giving them this or your family member Find a window that maybe isn't their south facing window or their north facing window, so east or west facing window, 
put it close to the window and it should do quite well. It shouldn't do too badly. They need to stay on top of the water and just remember to water it when it goes dry. This can trail or they can get a moss pole for it and grow it up and then you'll get bigger leaves and you'll get fenestrations on leaves and the fenestrations are the splits that you get on the leaves. So this, if it gets large enough, will get splits the same way on the leaves that you'll get on the Monstera Deliciosa, which is kind of the quintessential tropical houseplant that most people will recognize. It's a Swiss cheese plant. So very, very cool plant. A different, more interesting variety of something that we've been seeing around for a while. So definitely give something like the Marble Queen Pothos a try. So let me put this down and I'll pick up the next one and we can talk through that. So the next one I want to talk about is the Philodendron scandens Brazil. So this is similar to the heart shape, the heart leaf philodendron, which is a trailing philodendron. I've got it growing up a, a trellis. You can go get it trailing down or you can grow it up a trellis. Either way, if you grow it up, anything, anything that's trailing, if it's grown up, it will get bigger leaves. So that's something to bear in mind. This is a slightly different one because it doesn't just have the standard green leaves, but it will get these green leaves with a yellow stripe or yellow variegation down the middle. This is another one and I'll put this down. This is another one that like most of these plants, and there's a reason you can kind of see the commonality that's happening here. It likes to fully dry out before you water it. So all of these plants are generally good for people that maybe don't have plants, they're not going to necessarily remember all the time to water their plants, these things won't die up and crisp up in a sec. Spoiler alert, you will not be seeing any form of prayer plant or highly ornate fern or anything like this in this video for that very specific reason because most people won't do particularly well with those types of plants. There is a type of individual that will do quite well with that plant if somebody is maybe an overcarer and you know for a fact that they're going to overwater that plant a lot of the time, then think about something like a fern or a calathea. The calathea I would almost never suggest it to anybody as a gift. They look beautiful, do not get me wrong, they've got very ornate leaves, but they are exceptionally fussy. Even if you get their watering right, there's pests, there's all these other things that you don't want to be causing a headache for somebody that you're getting a gift for. You want it to be something nice and pleasant that they can look at that doesn't require an awful lot of work. Now the reason why I'm showing you the Brazil instead of this traditional green heart shape philodendron scandens is because the Brazil is a bit more interesting. It's got that yellow stripe down the middle which is not something you see very often in plants. You either get the fully green or you'll just get the fully neon plants. This is slightly different. It's very cool because it will trail. This is another one, as we obviously mentioned, that it needs to go fully dry before it's watered. It doesn't have high fertilizer needs. I think most of the plants that I'm going to talk about today aren't particularly fussed about getting an awful lot of fertilizer. If the person that you're gifting it to does fertilize it on occasion, they will appreciate it. This one doesn't need high levels of humidity either, but again, bright indirect light. So the same window that we were talking about a moment ago, this would do really, really good in the same window. Now, Let's go on to, I think, the last plant actually that I want to talk about. Let me put this down and I'll pick up the last one and we can chat about that. So the last plant I want to talk about is the Sansevieria starfish. And this is one that is called the snake plant. And this doesn't look like your traditional snake plant. And that's the reason I wanted to show you this one. It's also one that's becoming a lot more readily available, at least in the UK and in Europe. It's not necessarily a common, common plant, but you should be able to find this around and it's a bit more interesting to look at than just the traditional strappy leaf Sansevieria. This is another one, again I'm going to sound like a broken record throughout this video, that doesn't, it likes to go fully dry before it's watered. So all of the plants that I was talking about today are great for people that are forgetful, are great for people that go on holidays all the time, busy people that might have kids, pets and things like that, that might not always remember to water their plants on a schedule. This are all relatively good plants because they're relatively forgiving. As long as they don't overwater them, you're fine. This one, however, because it's a bit more succulent, it would appreciate as bright of a light as you can give it. This one can also do okay, not thrive, in a medium to low light situation, but bright indirect again, similar kind of window, will do exceptionally well and it will grow nice and big and beautiful. 
No pests with this one. I think pretty much most of these plants, another reason why I wanted to kind of mention them is they're not very big pest magnets. So at least they haven't been in my care. So again, you're not gonna be causing any grief or agitation to somebody and you can be all smug and happy when you give a gift like this and somebody's just like, oh, I don't know if I'm gonna kill it and everything. Just tell them, give it some bright light, water it when it's fully dry, and that's all they need to do really and they can enjoy the beauty that these plants will provide in their space without you worrying that you've given somebody something to care for that's going to cause them stress these are relatively stress-free plants that's why i thought i'd talk about them today but yeah hopefully you've enjoyed if you've got any questions comments do drop them in the comments down below i'd love to have that conversation with you and yeah hopefully i shall see you here soon and I hope that you truly, truly have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.